cool. All right. Well, today is 11th of January, 2021. This is the DevSync, and Ken has volunteered to go first. So let's go, Ken. So Friday, um, I was full of encouragement. <laughs> we had thought we found the problem. We patched it, and we were testing it. And uh, when I went to bed Friday night, uh, I was playing music so loud that it was aggravating my wife, which I can't do with my laptop. It doesn't get loud enough an aggravator. But actually, the Mark II was, which is a good thing. And so I was getting, turn that crap down, turn that crap down. So I had actually thrown a playlist in there. I was playing it in the background while Core was running. I could still communicate with it. I could tell it to turn the volume up and down. And unless the volume was at almost 100%, it could understand me and, and respond. And everything was great. And I went to bed Friday night encouraged. And I said, I'm going to leave this sucker run all weekend. And Monday, I've got good stuff to report. And so Saturday around <laughs> 3 o'clock, <laughs> it stopped responding. Now, that was a good run. It was like you know 12 to 18 hours. But uh, so I started looking at it over the weekend, what was wrong with it, and continued through this morning. And I believe that Chris and I are both in the same place in the code. And what I, I'll give you what I think is happening, um, but I haven't proven it yet, but I'm working on it. And I think we'll, we'll lock this down pretty quick. What I suspect is happening is because of the fix that we put in place, which resets the mic when an overrun occurs, you're in the middle of a routine that's reading from a buffer that just got emptied and reset. And your mic connection is no longer valid. Your buffer is no longer valid. In other words, our code isn't used to having the buffer and mic being reset down below it and all the data being cleared out of it while it's in the middle of a routine pulling data out of the buffer. So I suspect if we can catch that condition and reset the mic, in accordance with that, we should be okay. But that's a working theory, and that's my status for today. Okay. Well, if that's true, shouldn't we be? Should you be looking at uh, error handling? In that case, because that yeah, can happen. Yeah. So what I did is uh, the last thing I did is I went in there, and I right now it's set to not throw an exception on an overrun condition in the mic right. class. And I changed that to true and was just getting ready to test that when the meeting started. So, I'll, you know, that's, that's yeah. But, but I don't know that that'll catch it because it's not really throwing an exception. It's saying read from the buffer and the screen keeps saying there's zero bytes available. But it came into the routine trying to fulfill a certain count. So it thinks it has, like in this particular case, 912 bytes remaining to be read. But the screen keeps telling it there's zero bytes available. Right. Yeah, so that seems like an error condition that needs to be handled. Yes, that's what I believe is going on. But it's not as simple as getting an exception. We're going to have to use some logic to detect it and reset and whatever and test. Which brings me to the question of, um, is the is the Minecraft QA team me and, and Chris and Chris? Because I guess that's what we're kind of doing is we're beta testing, right? Yeah. I mean, you're the ones with the devices, so. Yeah, we don't, we don't have devices. Like, and Bayer's been with the team long enough to know that when you give me a device, I absolutely will tell you when it sucks. So, <laughs> and you'll no. break it every single time. You yeah, have the I, capability of breaking it no matter how good it is. <laughs> yeah, so I should have a device in the mail today. Are there instructions for me bringing that device up on the current software stack somewhere that's accessible? Yes, there is a whole Pantacore introduction blog or document that we've been building, right? Yeah, there's a document that gives you step-by-step -step how to... Does that live in, in Google Drive? No, it lives in Pantacore's. There's, there's a link to it. It it's yeah, a hack it's, and, it's a hack MD so that we can us and Pentacle can both edit it. Yeah, um, so let's see Josh. But, but I think I think for 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 you, Josh, like unless you're gonna be like going into the you know to the guts of the device, like if you're just using it as an end user, then all you all you have to do is download an image, flash it on, and go. 
Okay. Even that requires instructions. So, yeah. and I'm not telling you to write them. I'm happy to write the instructions, happy to, for both that and the, the assembly of the device, right? Just somebody point me at them. Point me at a starting place and I will, I'm happy to write. Once we have an image, um, we can probably put that on Google Drive, the image that we like, um, so that we don't know when I say go into Pentacore and log into that. And, and yeah, you won't be able to log into your device or look at log files, but at least you can get your image to run. Yeah, yeah I, I, I probably don't need that. You might want me to have that so I can dump problems on your desk with enough information to debug them. But for now, I would settle for by the end of today, whenever the UPS guy shows up, being able to to have a device on the on the desk here, and I might move it to the kitchen. We'll see. Well, I think we have some API work that we did that connects our back end to their back end. So maybe that's done already, and you can do that. I don't know. The API work is not done, but that's not needed. So for this. So somebody. Shoot me by somebody, Gez, if you're the best person, just shoot me a very oh. short two or three line email with a link in it and I will deal it. Thank yeah, for we'll do. Okay, great. Uh, well, uh, let's go over to Vera since he's unmuted. Yeah, so uh, I've had an interesting few days. Um, I have my R5 device, which is good. And so I have an R4 and R5 device running right now. Um, I also put a bunch of log messages into the uh, microphone file in an, an attempt to figure out why um, that first boot isn't working. And what I've found is, or what I think I've found, that there's a reason there's no log messages in that loop right now. Because whenever I put log messages in that loop, failure, just like that. Um, right now, I'm running it without any log messages in that loop, and it's been running for 15, 20 minutes without problem. Um, which, so I'm wondering if there's some sort of timing issue with I/O and that mic loop or something like that. I don't know, but if you pull those log messages out and let it run, it won't make it 24 hours. No, but it makes it more than 15 seconds, which is what I was with the log messages in. I, I couldn't even get all the way through boot without the microphone failing. Are the log messages going into an interrupt routine? We I'm... have okay, so we have, we have some really strange logging. No, it's pulled. It's pulled. It's pulled. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. So I don't know exactly why that is, but that's what I found today through multiple tests. That um, you know, the more log messages I have, the faster it quits on me, the microphone. Um, so. I, I do agree with Ken. We're going to have to figure out a way that if this interrupt happens in the middle of that listening loop, that we're going to have to figure out a way to handle it. Um, but still trying to figure out why it fails on first boot is going to be very difficult because um, I can't put a log message in there to me. It, and log messages I'm putting in there are probably making it break in a different place than it would be if they weren't there. Which is scary in and of itself. The um, the email I sent out early this morning said that when I attempted that, what I saw my very first boot was it's running without the benefit of a network connection, and that causes some difficulty. And the two specific points I saw in the log file are in that email I sent you, um, where it's saying I can't get it, I can't connect to GitHub, you know, so it's trying to update something and it can't. And then there's another one trying to download something and it's throwing a URL exception. So I suspect some of the aggravation from the initial boot has to do with um, the network not being available and system services that expect it to be available breaking and possibly not recovering. But um, I agree with Chris's assessment that we have a timing issue in the code that pulls the audio samples out of the ring buffer and certainly the log messages could be aggravating that, yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, what I'm down to is instead of being going into Pi Audio and Port Audio and trying to fix this, we just need to figure out a way. And maybe there's a small change we have to make to raise an assertion or something, but we have to figure out a way to handle it in our code when it happens. 
Um, right now, what I'm seeing is when the microphone fails, you get into this basically this infinite loop of trying to read the stream, and it says it can't read anything, and it just keeps going and going and going because it can't. It says it can't read anything, but there's stuff in the buffer. Um, so, um, so yeah. So I think we just need to get out of that loop somehow and restart it. And the only question I have is if we do that. Um, you know, are we going to lose, you know, what's the user experience going to be like, you know, if they're in the middle of giving it a, a request when it fails or we start it, you know, how does that look? And we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out when we make some coding changes, but. Yeah, um, I put a little more detail logging in the specific, specific condition is it's asking for a 1K block. It's saying it has 912 bytes remaining to read based upon its previous report of how big the buffer was. And it's saying that the stream is reporting there are zero bytes available. So it's going to stay in that loop until it can read 912 bytes. The stream is going to continue to tell it there's none available because the stream has been reset. <laughs> and so that's the situation. Now, how to resolve that, I don't know yet. But that's the actual numbers that I'm seeing on this particular one. And, and it's, it's different remaining values. Sometimes it's 900 bytes. Sometimes it's 50, whatever. So yeah. So uh, why are we seeing this error in the containerized version of core and not in when we just run it, you know, on a on a normal operating system? So two reasons uh, I suspect. Um, and when you say a normal operating system, remember that the Pi versus my Mac laptop are two vastly different operating environments. Probably the answer to your question regarding my Mac is my Mac's got a beefy processor and a bunch of RAM and it's not having any kind of race condition timing issues. Whereas the Pi is probably struggling to come back in time, uh, which is why we're getting those overrun errors in the first place. Uh, it happens after a valid recognition, the callback's not fast enough. And then it gets a buffer overrun because that interrupt service routine is consuming too much time. So you're overrunning the buffer. And uh, so the next time it tries to read the buffer, it gets an overrun because heads equal to tail or whatever. And uh, so the fix we put in was to reset port audio at that point. But port audio is low in the stack. Core is up in the stack. So we have to figure out that issue, if that makes sense. Hmm. All right. Well, I won't recommend uh, digging into the port audio source just yet. There's no need to. There's no need to. I mean, I'd still like to know why we're getting an overrun error, but this I'm almost positive is because of the patch we put in. Right. No, I, I get that. But yeah, but we're not doing anything that a gigahertz plus processor shouldn't be able to handle, you know, in terms of ISRs. So I agree. I agree. Well, computers aren't as performant as you know stuff running on the bare metal either so not, not no yeah, and there's also the case that we're reading three times as much data as we used to there there's a lot of potential that doesn't make any sense to me but why well why well because the hardware hasn't changed the amount of data that you're getting from the hardware is the same as it was before no we're getting 48k we used to get 16k that must have been translated somewhere in software because the hardware always outputs at 48K. Uh, when you say this hardware or other yeah. hardware? No, I mean our, the, the 201 hardware. The, because the XMOS chip only outputs at whatever the same rate as the input is. Well, I don't know that we've ever had an XMOS device running long enough to get into beta test formally. OK, but be that as it may, you know. It's going to output at 48 you would, kilohertz. You would think, I agree. You would think a quad core could keep up with it. Uh, you know, so I don't know. I think it's because we do too much when we get an in, inbound recognition. Well, I'm without... wondering if it has something to do with the, I don't know how the containerization works, but if there's some sort of higher level interrupt that's happening and in interrupting our ISR, that could cause problems. Yes, and... The same thing with our um, clock drivers, if they're getting starved of CPU or something. So, yeah, I just, I'm trying to take the uh, low hanging fruit approach. We may end up in there. I hope not. Ken makes a good point. We Our microprocessing logic is quite complex. 
there's a lot going on in a single loop to uh, you know to read the mic. So it's possible there's a problem there too. But I mean, at the same time, core runs fine on a Mark One. So <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't have this microphone. But um, yeah, but if you look in that code we were looking at, there were specific sections where it says, "Well, we got to do this weird funky thing because the Mark One blah." So you know, yeah. the question is. If we're doing that weird funky thing for the Mark One and we're running on a Mark Two, is that causing? I mean, I you know we'll. But see. we also like we've we've run the re-speaker and and the community run you know a whole range of different microphones. Like you'd think this this sort of thing would have presented itself pretty front and center. Yeah, I wonder if it's container it's stack USB versus I two S. Hmm. Yeah. So there are some differences, but I you know. True. We will do our best to try to, you know, fix this without digging too deep into. Yeah, that's a good point, Ken, on the I2S side. Um, I'll talk to Kevin and see if we can build a simple hardware monitor to see if there's any glitches on the I2S bus. Yeah, certainly with the clocks, right? I don't know any easy way without molesting them to, and a scope to get a decent clock signal. But if Kevin can yeah. do that, that would be. Yeah, the clocks were a concern originally with the I2S bus. Um, I thought we had solved that. They should be, they are generated in hardware. There's no software in the loop when it comes to uh, those clock signals. But uh, since the hardware is not really open source, we can't tell if there's some, some condition that might make them glitch. So I think maybe an external monitor is, is the, the way to go there. Yeah, but I really believe that, and again, it's really like Chris said, I believe we can fix this up high by detecting the condition and resetting. The question is, what does that do to the user experience? And we'll know as soon as we do that. Yeah, so my next, my tomorrow will be spent um, working with Ken, trying to get the next iteration of this fix in. It's getting better, it's just not there yet. Right, okay. Uh, let's go up to Gez then. You're muted. And that is the end of my, no. Uh, I spent the day doing lots of little things. Um, uh, so we, we uh, got a fix in for um, a, a situation where the, the idle screen should be showing, but instead it shows a black screen, um, and which I think everyone's probably seen at some point in time. Uh, so we fixed. Uh, one way that that happens, so we'll, we'll see if it continues to happen um, and whether that, that was everything. Um, I did some cleaning up of our PyPI permissions um, and started, while I was at it, started a document for um, for how we published a, to PyPI because um, it's kind of been done by different people over the years and therefore has been done consistently and um, so different different projects are kind of treated differently and want to make sure that that becomes more consistent and uh, yeah not not just for consistency sake but so that you know the same types of distributions are being uploaded and and that permissions are correct and you know information is available to end users and all that sort of stuff um, I made a quick skill for the uh, Panacore to so they can test the virtual keyboard um, because they were having they're having trouble with bringing that up. Um, so I need to check in on how that's going. Um, we did some little fixes for the timer skill um, UI, uh, which I think is all good to go. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I think, but I think. Um, based on the chats that just happened, I think my next focus is um, is getting that uh, mic visualization visualization stuff um, out of the Mark II skill and and into the um, into core where it should be. I would so. argue that that visualization may not be completely worth it, considering how quick and small some of the you know, there's causing problems. Some of this, when I'm working with it, there's two things that, that, that appear for like a half second and it looks really busy. You, you say something and you get these 
um, you know, the listening bars for like a half a second, and then you get that spinning think think thing for like a half a second. Um, you know, just a lot going on considering that the interaction is you know, short. So, yeah, we've yeah, talked about that too. Yeah, so, Gaz, the um, if you look in the mic.py file, yeah. you'll see where it's writing RMS to the disk. Yeah. If you look at the blue system skill, you will see where it's writing RMS to the disk and then later reading it. So simply take out from the skill the writing and reading, latching onto the mic and reading the RMS and use the file written by the mic and you'll be halfway there or there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's been a little bit of work on it already. So I'm going to go back and check how they um, how they uh, tried to change that because you know I don't just want to move that to another place. We want to make yeah make sure that we're not attaching to the mic again. No, I think you're missing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is in the mic.py file, it is writing the RMS to a file. Yeah. Blue system I, skill is also writing it to a different file. Just yeah, make yeah, it there's, read there's, from the one the mic writes. I I heard what you said. There's there's been some work to remove that stuff already, um, but I I think that they've essentially just tried to move the current process to another place as opposed to changing it so that it's not rereading it, like so that it's you know to do what you said. So that's that's what I need to go check. Okay. Um. Ken, does your anyway. fix like, work longer or better when you take that stuff out of the Mark II skill, or does that does it have, has it made a difference? So, are you saying if I put the log messages in there, does it blow out faster? No, I'm saying if you take that the uh, second uh, the Mark II skills reads of the mic out, if it yeah. makes it better or not. No, no, because the core foundational issue is the one you and I found. Um, we know, I know from looking at precise. The thing that got me on it was that. Whenever it would hang after Saturday in the afternoon, I would just go ahead and say, "All right, then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I break out a core. If I shut core down, is it hardware?" And so I'd run the precise recognizer little test I ran using Runner, and it would always work. So I knew it wasn't hardware. I knew it was inside core. Yeah. All right. Was that it, guys? All right. Thanks. Uh, Derek. Yeah. Okay. So today, mostly, well, yesterday I, I tested, uh, or I, I worked a little bit on on the Mark II that I put together, um, just to see if I could get it to do uh, anything with the latest image. Um, <clears throat> I got it up once with the mic working, and I haven't been able to get it to work since. Um, so I've tried many reboots, and I've not got the mic to work again. So. Uh, based on all this conversation, um, I think that just I'm going to wait till you guys have a more uh, reliable version before I mess around with that. So I got back to um, the, uh, the 3D printed design, uh, got the fans from Kevin on Friday. So I've been adding, um, I, I needed the, the correct dimensions off the fan anyway. So I've got that and I've been adding that to the 3D printed design. Um, and adding flow uh, holes on both sides and, and all that stuff. So that's been most of my day. But um, I do have two two SJ two hundred ones ready to to fire up, or if they're of any use for testing, let me know. Um, I've got one put together. I can put the other one in an enclosure pretty quickly as well. But yeah. Until then, I'm just going to continue getting this three uh, D printed design done so we can one together for project rollover when uh when we have uh, stable software okay great thanks um i'll want to talk to you derek and josh uh after this uh just real quick about uh how the fan should be assembled there's a just a little tweak uh to the, to the last minute change of vendor so oh, okay um so Josh looks like he stepped out of frame, so I'll go next. Uh, I don't have anything to report on the dev side of things, uh, except to let everyone know that, uh, oh, well, I already did this, but I'm going to be out most of this week, uh, starting on Wednesday. Um, so uh, I'll see you here for the dev things, but uh, don't expect to get much done outside of that. Um, OK, if Josh is around, 
Do you have anything to, to add, Josh? We'll just go ahead and assume not, um, since he hasn't got his hardware working yet. Um, all right, well, let's call it there for today, and uh, we'll talk again tomorrow. Thanks.